Hello, my name is James Meter and welcome to Peak Recording. Today we'll take a listen to three small diaphragm condenser microphones. The Octava MK012, the Shure SM81, and the Earthworks OM1. We'll hear what these three microphones sound like on two different instrument sources, as a mono drum overhead and on a strummed acoustic guitar. I'd like to briefly go through the history of each microphone manufacturer and then take a look at each mic's frequency response chart. I hope that this overview will give you an idea of each microphone's sound so that when we hear the samples, you can try to identify them. I'll then visit with drummer Garrett Tillman and singer-songwriter Steve Ducart to get their thoughts on the microphones. I'll offer some of my own opinions also. First up is the Octava MK012. Out of the three mics, this is the only one that I personally own, so I'm very familiar with it. Octava is a Russian manufacturer which got its start in 1927, making receivers, speakers, and other radio components for its home country. The company began exporting microphones in the mid-90s and they were well received based on their high quality and affordable prices. The MK012 is unique in that it has the ability to change polar patterns based on the screw-on capsule design. Mine even came with a pad that you can place between the microphone body and the capsule thus reducing the output by 10 dB. The instrument samples that you'll hear will use the small diaphragm cardioid capsule without the use of the pad. The frequency chart of the Octava shows us that it has a range of 20 Hz up to 20 kHz. You'll notice a spike in the low mids roughly between 200 to 600 Hz. This can lend itself to a sound that is warm, full bodied, or sometimes boxy. If we look at the high end, there is a small lift between 5 and 8 kilohertz. This area is considered to have the presence or the brightness of a source. Next up is the Shure SM81. Shure Incorporated got its start in 1925 by making radio parts. The company was and still is located in Illinois. During World War II, Schur was commissioned to make microphones and communication devices. Having the know-how to build equipment up to military spec, Schur has continued these build practices into current day manufacturing. Their reputation for reliable and durable gear is second to none. Though the SM81 doesn't have quite the same heft as some of their other microphones, like the SM57, it is still well built and loaded with usable features. According to the SM81's manual, it's a flat response cardioid condenser microphone featuring a wide frequency response and low self noise. It captures 20 Hz up to 20 kHz and has a mostly flat frequency response in the high end with a slight low frequency taper starting around 400 Hz. This low end dip can be associated with tones that are thin and can in turn let the higher frequencies naturally become more forward sounding. The mic is handy in that it has a built-in pad of 10 dB as well as a roll-off switch with two selectable slopes. For the comparison audio samples you'll hear, the mic was set to the flat position and the pad was not engaged. The final mic that we'll be checking out is the Earthworks OM-1. Earthworks was started by David E. Blackmer who began his career as the founder of DBX Audio in 1971. Blackmer left DBX to form Earthworks in the late 80s in the hopes of inventing new technologies for microphones and preamps. Earthworks microphones are designed based on Blackmer's research into ultrasonic frequencies and his claims that human hearing is five microseconds or better. This equates to 200 kilohertz, well above the 20 kilohertz that we refer to as the limit of human hearing. In contrast to the other two mics we'll be listening to, the Earthworks is an omnidirectional polar pattern. It captures an impressive range of 9 Hz up to 30,000 Hz, and when looking at the frequency chart, we see that it has a boost in the top end, starting around 8,000 Hz and rising until 22,000 Hz. 
From there, we notice a steep roll off. This type of high end is often representative of air, sparkle, or openness. The rest of the frequency chart is flat and tells us that this microphone doesn't exaggerate any other octaves. Now let's hear samples of each microphone used as a mono drum overhead positioned four feet directly over the snare drum. Listen for differences in tone and articulation of the kick drum, snare, tom, and cymbals. If you need to, spend some time switching back and forth between the samples to hear each mic's unique qualities. Special thanks to LA Session drummer Garrett Tillman for playing the groove you'll hear. After you hear the samples, I'll have a conversation with Garrett to find out what he thought about the mics. Let's check them out. So those awesome drums that you just heard were played by Garrett Tillman. Thanks so much for being here, Garrett. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I kind of gave Garrett the lowdown on the different microphones, and he does not know which one is which, but I'm hoping he can comment a little bit on the sounds of each. Yeah. Um, I have a hunch on one of them. Okay. Um, so we'll start with that one. Uh, overhead three that you have. Mm -hmm. Um, it definitely sounds more open than the other two. Um, and there's like more ambience and you can hear more of the room, it seems like. Um, and so my guess is that's the, that's the omnidirectional one, right? The earthworks. That's right. You Sweet. got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. It just sounded like, I mean, it was just, it was just more open. It was a little bit fuller sounding. You could hear more of the room. Um, that's awesome. And that, yeah. And then, mm -hmm. um, Number two, I definitely thought was more throaty sounding, um, and one had more of a shimmer, more high end to it. But within both of those, I think number one still had more punch to it. Okay. Um, especially when it goes to that Tom thing that we were listening to. Cool, cool. Um, it sounds more punchier for right. that. Um, but yeah, and I know... You asked me which one was my favorite, and I told you I had one. Yes. But I don't think I do. Okay. Uh, I was gonna fine. say I was gonna say it was the third one, but I think that was for, I don't know. They're all all very. They have their place, you know. Sure. I was listening yeah. to it, and there were some moments that three would sound really good, but like again that Tom thing, I thought one sounded really good for that. Cool. Um, but yeah. Well, That's just so thoughts. you know, I'll let you in on which mics is which. Okay. Um, number one. It's the Shure SM81. Okay. Number two is the Octava MK012. And cool. number three, as we talked about, was the Earthworks OM1. Yeah. So it's really great that you could hear all those different sounds in there because they're very similar. For sure. Even the... Omni. Yeah, one and two. I mean, all of yeah, them, really. Yeah, but yeah. one and two, I thought, really, there it was pretty hard to distinguish. Cool. Sounds, well, but. I don't know I'm gonna ha what I'm going to do because number two, the... Octave is the one I always rely on. Yeah. And the reason I kind of like go with it is because it has a nice presence presence around where the snare I think fits really mm. well. Yeah. So that's how I like that's why I like that one a lot. But you're totally right that I think um, the toms really sound really good on the yeah. the eighty one. So mm -hmm. I think that's a very valid point. Yeah. All sound so, great. <laughs> great mics. So but. to each their own. For real, yeah. And uh, I think it's very true what you said. It's like wherever 
the each other place, mm -hmm. and sometimes they could shine in a certain spot, and other times it might not work so well, but that's why there are so many microphones out there. Yeah. Because you can pick and choose. Definitely. Thanks, Garrett. That was some great feedback. Next, we'll hear what these mics sound like on strummed acoustic guitar. Again, take your time with the samples, listen for the tone of the guitar in broad frequency ranges, the low end, mids, and the highs. Another idea to consider is how each mic captures detail. After we take a listen, I'll have singer-songwriter Steve Ducart offer some comments after hearing the same samples that you'll be hearing. All right, well, this is kind of spur of the moment. Yeah. Uh, but Steve Dukars here joining me, and uh, he's going to help me take a listen and judge some microphones. And uh... I want to try to identify them too. So I want to tell you which one I like, if it's cool with you. I want to say which yeah. one I like the best, and then I want to see if I can get them. Totally. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I recorded all three mics, the same acoustic guitar. I looped like two bars. So I'm going to go back and forth. And um, what I'll do is I'll sh I'll yell out like one. Okay. When the first one's going and so on and so forth. Okay. So here is option one. All right. So you just, you heard all three. Yep. We went back through a couple times. Yep. And you have some thoughts? Okay, so two is my favorite. I think I heard, it was the most pleasing to me, I think I heard the most detail out of two. And I think I heard a little more low end out of two. They were all really close. Mm -hmm. I was actually shocked about how close they were. Either that or my ears are terrible. <laughs> no, they are very close. Um, so, and I think... Um, can I hear one and three again? Yes. So here's one. I think it's um, Octava, Earthworks, Shore. One, two, three. That's my guess. Did I get <laughs> any of them right? No. No. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Um. Well, as the tree said to the lumberjack, I'm stumped. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for participating. Yes. And, um... You know what that means, kids? Go out and buy yourself an Octava. <laughs> well, this is really interesting because Garrett was in here and mm -hmm. we listened to these three mics on the overhead. Uh-huh. And he picked out the Shure SM81 and I agreed with him that that one sounded the best on the drum set. Nice. And you mentioned that number two was your favorite, mm -hmm. and I agree with you there. And ah. I was kind of surprised because after Garrett liked the SM81 on the drum set so much, yeah, um, I was worried that I wouldn't like the Octava anymore. But this is proving that each there has their place. Something about that. I mean, you obviously just put them like together, right? Mm -hmm. When you're playing guitar. They're Next um, to each other, super close. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like it was, uh, there was some detail in it that I really liked. Cool. Yeah. I mean, one thing we noticed on the drum overheads 
is that the Octava, uh, I think, you know, it has a lift a little bit around like four or five K. So that I think, it. um, it made the cymbals on the drums a little harsh, but it brought out the snare. Mm -hmm. And then in this instance, um, it brings out some detail. So I think it's, uh, you know, give and take. It's, um, I would be interested, I mean, this would obviously not be for right now, but like interested to see how well the Octava takes EQ because it has that lift built in already. I mean, because that's the thing too. Like I'm almost like just programmed to just like boost uh, an acoustic at like 14. You know what I mean? Just like automatically. I'm just like, okay, I'm giving it air, you mm -hmm. know, but this already like kind of had it. Right, where okay. like maybe those were built a little more flat, you know. Um, it'd be interesting to see. I think the Earthworks might, because um, it's like more of a measurement mic, like mm -hmm. be able, you might be able to just like crank the high end like forever and it still would sound kind of pretty. Whereas these other two wouldn't. There was, I don't know. There I was don't know. something about the Earthworks. There was an element to it that gave it away when I was listening here. Of uh -huh. course, I knew what it was. But um, I noticed that there was a little bit more headphone bleed because uh, I tracked this to like a, a, you know, Garrett's performance that he had done. Uh, so when I was listening, I could tell that there was a little bit more headphone bleed and it being a omnidirectional mic. I think it was picking up some of that within the room that the other ones weren't. Um, oh, that's totally cheating. Yeah, it you is. Cheated. <laughs> I cheated. <You're> cheating. <laughs> totally cheated. Um, well, that was fun. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I wish I got one, but oh well. Much thanks to Steve for taking a listen. Really appreciate that. Now I'd like to give some final thoughts and opinions as to what I took away from this experience. If you're in the market for a small diaphragm condenser, I think the SM81 has an edge on these sources. It captures the drum set in a way that doesn't overemphasize any one aspect of the kit. It feels the most even to me. It fared very well on acoustic guitar as well, giving it an organic or natural sound. In comparison, the octava has some areas of the frequency spectrum that sound overly sweetened. In the case of acoustic guitar, this actually flattered the instrument and made it sound better. If we consider these same frequencies on the drum set, it sometimes made the cymbals a little brittle or hard sounding. Lastly, the OM-1 has a very real-to-life representation of the sound source. It has the effect of being in the room with the instrument as it's being performed. This approach can work very well when you want to capture the room tone in addition to the direct sound of the instrument. An example of this might be when you're recording an orchestral instrument and a room that has been professionally tuned, such as a concert hall. Another instance might be when you're recording room ambience for use in Foley video. Oftentimes, in modern productions, sounds lean towards a more dry capture so that artificial reverbs can be added after the fact. Because of this detail, I would encourage microphone owners to become familiar with cardioid polar patterns before checking out the Omnis, as omnidirectional mics offer a more specialized sound. I hope that this video gave you some insight into the sound of these three mics so you might be able to better use them in your own recording adventures. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please consider liking and subscribing so that you're updated for future videos. There's also a link below where you can offer direct support. Another shout out to Garrett Tillman and Steve Ducart for offering some critiques of the mics. Lastly, I'd like to mention and thank Gio DeCanto for playing bass and synth on the song you've heard throughout this video. Thanks guys. Until next time, keep chasing those tones and take care. Oh,